lifetime. And I'll talk about some of this from my own personal story as well. So I said I was going to be short, but I'm not doing too good a job. Uh, next slide, please. So jumping in, um, this, this talk is not about me, but I will speak towards the um, a little bit about my story when it comes to developing the cooperative science centers, developing STEM leaders. Um, don't worry, man, I'll talk over this slide. So for me, I was an Elmore CSC student. Uh, came in graduate school. I wasn't even thinking about NOAA as an undergrad. I was uh, training in molecular biology and cell biology. Found out that I could use those skills uh, to do fisheries, have fish health work, and look at environmental challenges in Chesapeake Bay. Um, through my trajectory, I was able to go from Elmore CSC to working at uh, our in-cost lab in uh, Oxford, Maryland, there on the Eastern Shore. Uh, and so I was able to bring those cell and molecular biology tools to bear and really bring value to the NOAA team. And when I got there, I had a great team that really helped my growth, my NOAA advisor, I, everybody was rooting for me and brought me on as a true science partner, not just as a, hey, a student that goes get coffee and none of that. I was expected to produce and be a part of that science team. Uh, and through both my engagement with, um, uh, with my, my colleagues, with uh, other peers, and the training that I was able to obtain through LMR CSC has essentially put me on the path where I am today. I serve as division chief for uh, one part of our, uh, uh, our uh, INCOS science team that does a lot of applied science research uh, for coastal pollution and contaminants. With that, I really wish my slide would come up. With that, uh, <laughs> okay. My point being, it was all about seeing my particular science skills and interests and how they apply, not just in sort of a topical fashion saying, hey, I want to go, you know, rescue dolphins and none of that, but really seeing how my science skills and expertise tied into the demand for the type of science that Noah was looking to uh, produce. Uh, in that case, looking at um, environmental impact could just be better. In this case, what we'll see today, talking about resilience and building economies. Um, my story is not unique. I don't have a slide up here, but my point is I have an entire group of peers who have all came through this program. We've all continued to pull together uh, and root for each other and support each other and their leaders. Um, April Croxton was one of the individuals in, in the slide. She's one, she was, uh, she was CCME before it was CCME. Went to the Noah's Milford lab in Connecticut, did great work where her research was promoting oyster aquaculture there in the Northeast. Uh, she's now at NOAA headquarters, uh, continuing to grow professionally. She's stepping in as the president of the American Fisheries Society. True leader and still. Um, Aisha Brisson, LMR CSC, went to university, uh, she went to Erasmus, uh, University of Miami. Came into NOAA as a social scientist. Addressing many of the topics that uh, we're, we're going to be talking about in this session. Uh, not only did she grow within NOAA and see success, she's now taking those skills. She's at the Department of Treasury now, doing big things to help integrate climate impacts, equitable service delivery into the Department of Treasury. So not even with NOAA, she's grown and, and applying those skills and talent to an entire different field, but still being able to contribute to climate resilience uh, and economies. Those stories can go on. You are a part of a group that is producing true STEM leaders, and I'm not talking about just me or one or two people, but multiple individuals throughout this time who are doing big things. And the big piece I want you to take away from their stories as well is that we're all rooting for each other. We network. We tell each other about jobs. When I got my position now, I utilize that network to do mock interviews, to get reviews of my resume, even on a personal level. Uh, back in 2020, I lost my mom in 2020, breast cancer. Spent a good six months down there with her, uh, helping take care of her care. It was that network of individuals, many of which I met at these forums and have become friends of mine that were reaching out, saying, hey, Lonnie, you okay? Do you need something? You don't have to put on a strong front. Do you need something? We're here for you. That bond and that network stretched beyond just saying the professional and the science side and has really become a major component of life. And that's one of the messages I want you want to bring here to you today is the fact that you're creating some of these bonds, professional side, many of them are going to be uh, personal side, but you're creating these bonds. Use this platform in this special place 
to develop these relationships and maintain them and keep them and root for each other uh, and continue to move forward. Uh, here's some of my stories. How much time I got? Yeah, keep going. Let's go. So one, two, one more. Keep going forward. The last thing I'll say just to close this out here. Um, I mentioned each of you all as your own small businesses, corporations, delivering your supply of expertise to the market demand for science service delivery. I wanted to make sure that point was clear, and I'm not talking to it in clouds here, but when we talk about the NOAA sciences, when we talk about what you're going to be doing to help impact uh, climate adaptation, climate resilience, and help grow economies, that's the NOAA game especially in the ocean service and especially for my side of the uh, national ocean service within ACOS. It's about delivering applied science services, whether that's data, whether it's science tools and products, it's about getting science in the hands of individuals in a way that's gonna make major impacts on key management decisions or the ability to grow our economy. So for example, on algal blooms, a lot of my division does work within harmful algal blooms. Those blooms come up, they produce toxins, get people sick. We actually take our R&D to develop forecasts for where these blooms are gonna be, uh, where they're gonna go, and produce a forecast that um, helps people get out of harm's way. In the case of, we're down here in Florida, red tide comes in, we're able to say, hey, where's that bloom at? Where is it going? Is it going to impact people's health? In the case of red tide down here in Florida, it's a toxin that comes up. And if the wind's blowing towards the beach, you got asthma, elderly, any kind of issue, you get sick. You can get sick. And so we produce forecasts to keep people out of harm's way. But it's based off that foundational R&D and the delivery of applied science tools that directly impact uh, economy. Um, we do a lot of work, oyster and fin fish. A lot of our work is applied science that helps drive aquaculture and, and harvest, safe harvest, sustainable harvest of this resource. So you got to support the industry, that direct private sector and uh, the public management of our resources based off that r and I won't take you through all of this, but my point is in order to do much of this work, it's not just being a fisheries biologist or environmental scientist, right? It, it is about taking an uh, interdisciplinary approach about your expertise and that you bring to bear and delivering it in a way where that expertise is meeting a demand for the science. Um, I'm going to stop there and just reiterate my point. Put two slides up, please. One more. Thank you. I want to stop here for time purposes. I want to make sure that you're aware, best way to contact me, we'll continue this conversation. We'd love to continue to build that network here within the Equality Science Centers. LinkedIn is the best way to reach me. Uh, but again, I want to repeat those three messages for you. You are going to be leaders in STEM. CSEs, EPP produces leaders in STEM. We want to see you look at yourself as your own small business or corporation that has that supply of expertise that really can drive NOAA science, can drive our delivery of services to help meet the challenge of climate change and help grow our economy. And please continue to build this network. Use these uh, couple of days that you have here. But don't just walk away and forget everything. Grow these contacts, stay in touch with each other and grow this network while you're here and as you move forward uh, through the rest of uh, your academic career and your professional career, okay? Uh, with that, hopefully, I probably didn't make up much time. Uh, I'm gonna get to the uh, student presenters and I appreciate your time. Looking forward to hearing the <laughs>